More sanctions hitting tech companies here in the US. Here's how you can get hard drives on the cheap cheap and AMD is looking to go toe to toe with Apple for the best highest end APU on the market. Let's get in the hot news everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, June 24, 2024. I'm gonna start off today talking about the latest company to get hit with US sanctions and that is Kaspersky, which is a leading antivirus company, which is actually based in Russia and so the US is now imposing new sanctions on this company, specifically because of all of the Russian invasion of Ukraine that has been going on. And so users have 100 days to find a functioning replacement before Kaspersky is actually ended in case you end up using it as your antivirus. And this is on top of individual sanctions that happen to board members at the company with the US government saying that there's a significant privacy risk due to the fact that they operate in Russia. Now, this is also coming a couple weeks after the fact that Deepcool got banned in the US for the exact same same reasons. For a little while, you could still find their products on various different retailers. At one point, I think last week, there was a fire sale that happened on certain products. But now if you go and try to find Deep Cool products anywhere, you shouldn't be able to find them at American retailers. If you search Deep Cool on Newegg right now, you're going to get Be Quiet as well as several different competitors popping up. If you search for Deep Cool, what it actually ends up showing you is various products that they have, but that will lead to their product page, which then lets you know that they are out of stock and they are not like likely to be restocked anytime soon. Now, additionally, I've reported on this in a short that we did on this. Deepcool hasn't really said a word about this publicly. All of their uh, marketing has just been posting memes on Twitter day after day after day. It feels like they had a bunch of scheduled content that was supposed to go out and they're just letting it go out. It's very strange, but in case you're being affected by this Kaspersky ban here in the US, you should hear about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Bitdefender. Bitdefender is a leader in the cybersecurity space, being named product of the year in 2023 by AV Comparatives and Editor's Choice by PC Mag in 2022. They're committed to defending people all around the globe from cyber attacks with the goal of providing an improved digital experience for their users. Bitdefender Total Security offers threat protection against malware, spyware, and adware across five devices, all without slowing down performance. Additionally, Bitdefender works on multiple operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. Bitdefender uses a multi-layered protection system that reacts instantly to online threats that does not compromise your system's performance. Bitdefender also works to detect when you're playing games, watching movies, or working, and pauses unnecessary requests and halts unimportant background activities as to not interfere with your device's performance. If you need a little help looking after your system, Bitdefender Autopilot is here to help. Designed to be an advisor, Autopilot will give you a deeper insights into your security and offer recommendations based on your needs and usage patterns. Bitdefender also works to provide you with extra privacy Privacy, adding additional layers of security to your microphone and webcam to alert you when apps and web pages access your devices. On top of that, you also have access to Bitdefender's anti-tracker extension that allows you to view and manage what information websites are collecting from you. Bitdefender is a great option for anyone looking to take control of their cybersecurity. You can check them out for yourself and get protected today via the link in the description below. As always, a huge thank you to Bitdefender for sponsoring today's video. Speaking of security, AMD needs to up its as well as Apple because last week they both got hacked by the same hacking group, but AMD's come out and said that the security breach likely isn't a material impact on their business, specifically because this happened from a third party source where they had access to certain documents from AMD, but they're not actually going to have anything that's going to allow people to make new viruses for their chips or, or as opposed to something like the Sony hack that happened recently where people were able to play pre-release demos of games that aren't even out yet with a CPU roadmap, yes, we'll have an idea of what AMD is trying to bring to the table over the next coming years, but that doesn't mean you actually end up getting the CPU anytime sooner. It actually might slow things down a little bit, but AMD is saying that this is not a big deal. And based on what Apple got hacked, this appears to be a third party issue that's not necessarily addressing things that are core to either of their businesses. And AMD is probably going to tighten down the ship a little bit, but it shouldn't matter to the end consumer very much. But what does matter is whether or not AMD is telling the truth when it comes to how good their new CPU are, and according to leaked benchmarks of the upcoming Ryzen AI 9 365, which makes it feel like a Microsoft product, fantastic naming scheme, AMD. I just want to keep applauding you for how fantastic this naming rebrand was. I just, it's mwah, chef's kiss slash S. But according to leaked benchmarks, this new 365 processor is in line with where AMD said up to 15% IPC increase. What we're seeing, at least in synthetic benchmarks, is that yes, it's between 15 and 16% 
30% faster than the previous generation, which is what you want to see. Graphics benchmarks have it performing significantly faster than the previous generation, 25 to 30%. CPU appears to be between 10 and 15% in a lot of different instances, which means that you will likely have a very good competitor when it comes to new mobile laptops. So there is the big hype around the Snapdragon laptops, which launched last week. But as we're finding out, the GPU on that kind of sucks. It's not performing very well. CPU and battery life tend to be pretty good. But if AMD is launching these new mobile processors on July 15th, like they've promised that they're going to be, then this likely might make it so that the competition for Snapdragon uh, puts them out of the market before they can even establish good market share. We'll have to see how all of that works. But let's see if Reese has a deal on a laptop or two. I don't know. I We'll have to see what, what the deal people bring us. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And you know, hey, look at that. Some deals. First up, we have this Epo Maker Brick 87 10 keyless hot swappable mechanical keyboard with a little Lego feature so you can add on bricks and customize it how you want. You can pick this up for only $49.99, making it $50 or half off. But then next up, we have this Corsair IQ Link AIO LCD screen module for only $60.99, making it $39 off. It clips onto compatible Corsair AIOs and, you know, adds an LCD screen and a whole bit of extra RGB for you. And then lastly, we have this Huon Inspiroid Keydal KD200 wireless drawing tablet for only $79.99 with the coupon applied, making it $60 off. I'm a big fan of Huon tablets. I used one for a couple of years. So hey, big recommend. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I've got a deal for you when it comes to hard drives. In case you're looking for any sort of hard drive to build out a NAS system, which is the only reasonable way to have a hard drive, don't put them in your gaming systems, folks. Have it for external storage where you're storing important things if you're just storing your your files delete them you don't need that many but seagate opening up a ebay store to sell refurbished hard drive in order to impact their environmental aspect to make sure that not as many hard drives are getting shredded and they're going through a rigorous certification process to make sure that they're top quality according to seagate where you can pick up to a 22 terabyte hard drive for around 300 bucks so it appears like if you need to get a refurbished drive seagate's trying to bring them to you directly and and AMD is trying to bring the fastest APU to you directly. This has been something that has been uh, irking my gurk when it comes to AMD's APUs for quite some time. They put the fastest of the fast into consoles and then what we get on desktop is not very good. But Strix Halo looks to change all of that when it comes to their upcoming processor because there's new benchmarks coming out showing that it can be combined with up to 128 gigabytes of memory and 120 watt power target, which is significantly higher than anything we've seen on APUs in the past. Also, the fact that it supports that much memory means that they're trying to go for a very high-end, high-performing mobile processor that can keep track with essentially whatever Apple can put out right now. And I don't think Intel has an equivalent anywhere because not only are you going to be getting all of the Zen 5 cores that are going to make it very good on the CPU side, but you're also supposed to be getting a GPU that's going to be equivalent to like an RTX 4070, allegedly maybe an RTX 4080 laptop graphics card. So you're looking at very powerful graphics, very good CPU with a ton of memory and a high power target all in one form factor, making it so that if you're going to want all of the power that you can get in a singular place, it might be that the AMD Strix Halo chips, which are supposed to be coming out at some point in the future, might be the best option that's possibly out there on the market. I'm excited to see when this comes out. I'm continuously looking forward to Strix Halo. We already have benchmarks for Strix Point, which are showing that, at, especially on the graphics side, it's performing remarkably. And I, I'm excited to see more of what AMD has for this coming out to the market sometime soon. And I want to see what you guys had on the market of comments last week in Thursday's episode of Hot News over on Floatplay and Daffinage saying, both Apple and AMD being hacked by the same group is crazy. If that's true, they were. To which Randomness over on YouTube said, the hacker group was definitely led by the user benchmark Mark dude targeted both companies that have wronged Intel and actually Intel broker was the name of the the company that hacked both of these uh, Apple and AMD so that's just kind of neat and quinky dink couldn't have possibly been Intel right and then we got WJC saying still remember when at the turn of the millennia or so IBM was promising Apple 8 gigahertz 8 core risk chips by 2005 maybe in another timeline I don't remember that at all but I was also in elementary school when that happened so I'm not familiar I was was paying attention back then, but I believe you. And then we got Fragalot saying, so these ARM CPUs running Windows, can you run 
any Windows software on them or just Microsoft Store apps only. Um, it's neither, it's a kind of a false dichotomy there. Um, you don't have to just run Microsoft Store apps. Also, it's not any app, like it has to be specifically developed for the ARM architecture. However, Microsoft did do work to make their emulator better. Uh, they called it Prism. That was one of the big updates with Copilot plus laptops. But um, there are instances where Prism doesn't work or it doesn't work very well. And uh, so you have neither an ARM native uh, program, neither a accelerated emulated program making it so that it's just a crappy experience so it's not quite as smooth as the apple silicon transition because apple controlled that from the top down saying to developers either you do this or nobody's going to use you when it comes to uh, developers on windows supporting it at this point um, it's better and the prism emulator seems to be better than it was previously it's not great it's not it's not perfect there's still going to be hiccups this is going to be for early adopters right like that's the weird part of this is that they're priced very high they're priced at the same price as macbooks um or uh highly competitive intel slash amd uh thin and lights and then they also have a technically worse overall experience depending on how broad your program spectrum goes they're better in battery life for now right like we're waiting for strix point to release in a few weeks and battery life should be better on that we're waiting on lunar lake to launch in q3 battery life supposed to be incredible on that so there there's things that are changing in the mobile sector that i making these qualcomm chips i i i don't know i don't know if they're gonna succeed time will have to tell and i will tell on me if I keep doing this episode of Hot News, because I'm, I'm I gotta stop, and so if I keep going, it's I I gotta tattle on myself. That was that was a great outro. You're welcome. <laughs>